Hi, I'm Nathan with VAD Robotics, and today in this video, we're going to be discussing the new FTC advancement criteria being introduced in the 2025-2026 season. So let's start with some background information. In 2017, FIRST decided to add an additional championship due to an overwhelmingly large number of teams, which caused many teams to not be able to make it to the World Championships. They had to switch back to a single championship during COVID for safety and logistical reasons, but this caused the problem of team growth outpacing championship growth. What I mean by that is that the number of teams in the program was growing faster than the number of available spots at the championships, which resulted in 2024 in less than 3% of teams advancing to the world championships. First, it's attempted to remedy this problem by increasing the number of teams at championships to allow 2.8% of teams to championships, as well as adding the new premier events, a new championship that you can advance to instead of the world championships and giving 4.4% of teams a chance to compete there. Let's discuss the current system used for advancing teams. So as you know, the team that advances first to the next level of competition is the team that would inspire first. Then it goes to the winning alliance teams before going back to inspire two and three and then alternating between teams for the rest of the slots available. Now this system has been used for a long time, but it has problems. The biggest problem is that it forces teams to try to become specialists. What I mean by that is that teams often have to decide if they want to be an Inspire team or a Robot team, i.e. do they want to focus on trying to win Inspire first or focus on being Winning Alliance captain. And what this means is that the teams that do this often completely disregard the other half of the program and only focus on either building the best possible robot or trying to win Inspire first. There are, of course, teams that attempt to do both, but these teams are in the minority, and most teams focus on only half of the entire program and are forced to compete against each other in very diametrically opposed methods. This also brings me to the second problem, or the Inspire Third problem. Oftentimes, the team that wins the Inspire Third has a chance of advancing to the next level, but the robot often isn't the strongest because they're focusing on Inspire, but the awards aren't that strong either because they try to focus on trying to get Inspire first, but only got Inspire third. This makes it feel like the Inspire third team is oftentimes less deserving than some of the teams that win lower ranked awards or have stronger robots that couldn't quite make it. This also has a third issue of picking bias for captainship. So for instance, imagine that the advancements only have two slots available and that the number one captain attempts to pick the number two captain. Now, if the number two captain wants to win the competition, accepting the number one's captain's offer makes a lot of sense. But unfortunately, due to the current system of advancement, if there are only two available spots, the number two captain is actually incentivized to decline the offer and make their own alliance, even though it would be weaker, because only the captain gets to advance. So this puts the number two captain in an awkward situation where they can't make the strongest alliance possible because they want to advance. All right, now let's discuss an overview of the changes that are coming for this season in terms of advancement. The first and most obvious change is that the number of advancement slots have increased from 256 teams to 336 teams. This is a huge jump in team number, the biggest we've seen since the splitting into two worlds. The long-term goal by, stated by FIRST in the document, which I will link in the description below, is a total of 8 to 8.5 percent of teams advancing to either world championships or the premier events. We don't know the exact number that this increase will bring it to, but we assume it will be close to this number, and overall it's a good change that I think everyone will be happy with. The bigger change that I think more people are confused about is that the old system of advancement has changed. We are now using a points-based advancement system based off of a cumulative total of team accomplishments at a given event. Now we're going to break down each of the various ways you can earn these points in a little bit, but the various ways that, you, that points can be earned are through qualification round performance, alliance captains and draft order appearance, playoff advancement, and team judges awards. Let's start by breaking down each of the ways that teams can earn points to advance to the next level of competition. First is the qualification round performance. The maximum number of points a team can earn is 16, and the minimum number is 2. And according to FIRST, these points scale off of a distribution based off of the number of teams at the event. We were not given further details on what this distribution exactly looks like, 
but it's suffice it to say we can assume that teams will get more points the higher rank they are and it will probably scale in a linear fashion so that the higher ranked teams can earn 16 15 14 points and the lower ranked teams earn two three to four points next is the alliance captains and draft order appearance the maximum number of points a team can earn through this category is 20. one important note before continuing is that both teams on an alliance get the same number of points there is no advantage to being a captain of an alliance what this means is that teams are no longer incentivized to try to decline to become a captain because being a captain provides no additional benefits you want to just make the strongest alliance possible the points you receive are 21 minus your alliance number for instance the alliance 3 will get 21 minus 3 or 18 points both teams on the alliance this is based off of your ranking at the end of alliance selection before playoffs so this does not take into account any playoff advancement this is simply the order of the alliances as they stand at the end of alliance selection next we're going to discuss playoff advancement the maximum number of points a team can earn via playoff advancement is 40. that would go to the winning alliance both teams of the winning alliance would receive 40 points the final alliance would receive 20 points the third and fourth place alliance would receive 10 and 5 points respectively and the remaining alliances would receive no points finally we're going to discuss the team judged awards the maximum number of points a team can earn is 60 and this is awarded for getting inspire first inspire second will get 30 and inspire third will get 15. notably and this is a pretty big change all other awards are worth the same number of points this means that think award is no longer the next highest ranked award but between think connect motivate innovate control design they're all worth the same first place in any of these awards gives a team 12 points second place gives them six points and third point place gives them three points there is no longer any difference between the various awards to see the new system in action i did a case study and compared the old system to the new system in my home region of the los angeles region in the 2025 championships we got to send four teams to the world championships and if you notice those same four teams would, would have advanced under the new system as they did in the old system however if you notice the order of those teams is different team 11770 curiosity the inspire first winner would have only been the third ranked team under the new system which means that if we were a small region with only two advancement slots our inspire first winner would not have advanced to the world championships additionally if you look at our fifth ranked team 26504 axolotls they would have been replaced with 21380 beyond robotics under the new system if you'd like to try this with your own regions please do and let me know in the comments to see how these changes would have affected the advancements in your own regions so here are my personal thoughts on how the change affects ftc and the system in general overall i think this change is for the positive this makes our system most similar to the FLL system, where the champions award, the team that advances to the next level, is based off of a combination of multiple factors, not just excelling in a single direction. And obviously, more teams advancing to the championship is always better. The championship is an amazing experience, and for those who haven't experienced it themselves, giving a chance for more teams to experience it is always welcome. I also believe, as evidence in the case study, that the new system does not change the advancement of teams as much as people might think the inspire first and the winning alliance captain are still the teams that are most likely to advance to the next level but not always and i think that the new system is it does a good job of balancing these giving the teams that won these awards their flowers while still giving other teams that performed well in, across a variety of subjects a fighting chance at making it to the next level Thank you so much for watching and be sure to like and subscribe to see more videos on various first related topics.